Hello friends, welcome to study the technologies. In our today's session for physics for class 10th, we are going to discuss a few details about concave mirrors. So now let's discuss about them and uh, try to understand various features of the concave mirror. So first of all, as I'm sure you people are uh, having information about this uh, mirror set, which has uh, one surface to be a polished one and one is a reflecting surface, right? So one is having a polished surface, we can, uh, we can I mean, uh, draw it something like this way. Right, where we have these uh, tilted lines, this surface is polished one, and this opposite surface we can have a line of sight. Okay, so from here we can get our reflected image. Now, something about spherical mirrors, these are the plane mirrors, and now let's discuss some point about spherical mirrors. Now, these uh, spherical mirrors, if we talk about these, are the part of a big circle right big circle or big sphere actually in the uh, in better words we can say and in two dimension it uh, represented as a uh, circle here but in fact these are the part of a sphere actually so we have two kind of scenarios either we have a polished surface like this way right outer surface is polished one or we can have a inner surface to be polished one it's like this way okay. so the mirrors where the outer surface of the sphere, if it can uh, extend its, its uh, boundaries to this extent, we can find out it forms a kind of a sphere here, right? So here, like if we polish the outer surface of this sphere, and we can cut the sphere from uh, this particular plane, we can find a concave mirror, right? This part, this one is your concave mirror here. So now. Let's try to figure out. This is your concave mirror where the outer surface is polished one. Now the question is like, how can we remember that which particular uh, kind of uh, mirror is called as a concave mirror, which one is a convex mirror? A very simple formula. Very, it's not a formula. I mean, a very simple method to remember it. It's something about concave, right? Concave means like outer surface is polished one so that you can look into the cave, right? You can just uh, make it uh, kind of look at it something like this as a kind of a cave, right? You are looking into the cave. You are able to look into the cave. So that's a mirror where the outer surface is polished one so that you can have a look into the cave. You can call it as a concave mirror. And the other one over here, and this is called as your convex mirror. Okay, so concave and convex mirror. So by definition, like a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inward, that is focused towards the center of the sphere is called as your concave mirror. And a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outward, that is called as your convex mirror. Okay, so now let's take some deeper dive into uh, these uh, concave mirror in this session. In later session, we will cover about a convex mirror also. So before we go ahead, uh, let me figure out some very important points that uh, are supposed to be covered over here. So the first important point is pole. Then we have center of curvature. Okay. After that we have something called a principal axis okay then we have focal point right 
focal point what is this focal point and you might have heard about like this is the focal point of a lens of mirror or something like then we have radius of curvature and focal length okay so let me demonstrate it actually uh, instead of just mugging up the entire session let me go ahead and demonstrate it and uh, let me tell you the location where you can find out these points here okay so let me draw this uh, uh, mirror once again so here is your mirror let's see this one okay this is your concave mirror so this surface is polished one plus this now first of all principal axis the principal axis is a line which actually passes through the mid level of your mirror okay but uh, before this principal axis before we identify your principal axis let me share something about your center of curvature so as i already told you that this particular mirror this concave mirror is basically a differential part of your sphere right very small part of a sphere right so if i'm talking about a sphere then that particular sphere must have some center point right and this center point is actually denoted by c and this is called as your center of curvature the center of curvature is already den uh, always denoted by this c here right now the thing is like if we draw a straight line that is a radius of this center of curvature that means uh, if we can take some another color here it's like this way a line which is intersecting it like this way so this one is your principal axis this green line that you can see here is your principal axis right where well, all these points your focal point and all uh, these uh, you know uh, kind of uh, center of curvature and pole will be residing here fine now the geometric center of this concave mirror is actually called as your pole this one is your pole which is represented by p fine so it is very obvious that this particular length this one you are talking about uh, let me let me mark it here the distance between center of curvature and pole this distance is called as your radius of curvature let me denote it with r right this is your radius of curvature fine now a middle point in this particular line this one over here this is called as your focal point right this is something called as your focal point okay now let me let me mark it over here as well this is denoted by f and this is your focal point okay i'll explain you the uh, you know utility of this focal point also coming on then the distance between the pole and the focal point is called as your focal length 
right? And uh, you can denote this focal length with the small f. Something like this. Okay. So now I hope it's clear to all of you about the details. Like we have a center of curvature, which is basically the center of the sphere of uh, this from which uh, this particular mirror has been cut down. Then we have pole, which is basically the center or geometric center of this particular uh, concave mirror. And the line joining this uh, center of curvature to the pole is your uh, this one your uh, uh, radius of curvature. The middle point is a focal point, and the distance between the pole and the focal point is your focal length. Okay. So just remember these points. This is very important to understand about the concave setup. Actually, fine. Now let me move ahead and try to figure out like uh, <clears throat> what is the main use of this focal point here. This basically focal point is a point in space at which the light incident towards the mirror and traveling parallel to the principal axis will meet after the reflection. Okay. So before I go ahead and explain these points, so let me cover up how it actually how the light uh, passing takes place and uh, what is the significance of this uh, uh, focal point over here. So let me draw the mirror once again. So let's say this time this is your mirror. Okay. Let me polish this figure. like this okay now here uh, let's say I have this principal axis this is my principal axis okay then here I have this uh, let's say this is my center of curvature center of curvature and this is my focal point and this is the pole okay now let me draw a straight line and uh, which is will, which will be actually representing the light straight light okay so let's say a light which is coming from uh, some location and this is parallel to the principal axis it's something like this way all right let me uh, decrease the thickness here okay this is the light which is coming from some source and right now this is parallel to the principal axis so how the reflected light behave this reflected light will always pass through this focal point this is a very important phenomena guys so please remember it and this is the actual significance of your uh, this focal point so whatever be the light which is coming through uh, some location and which is parallel to the principal axis this must pass through your focal point just remember this very important point okay it's like this way fine now in terms of laws of reflection remember that these uh, there are two important laws first one that is the any incident ray traveling parallel to the principal axis on the way to the mirror will pass through the focal point upon reflection this is the first and most important point and the second point is that any incident ray passing through the focal point on the way to the mirror will travel parallel to the principal axis on reflection let me see how it actually looks like I have shown you with these blue lines which are traveling uh, parallel to the principal axis and upon reflection they are passing through the 
this uh, uh, focal point right now let me draw another set of line let's say i am using this purple color now let's say uh, there are some lines which are passing through this uh, focal point right which are let's say which are passing through this focal point and something this way which is coming from this particular manner and upon the striking it will move back in a position parallel to the principal axis got it so remember this point if a line which is coming from parallel to the principal axis and after reflection it will pass through the focal point and if a light of line uh, which is coming from a uh, passing through the focal point and then it is getting reflected then it will travel parallel to the principal axis okay so these are the two important theorems just remember this which are very important actually and yeah. our all these ray diagrams will be dependent on these two theorems here now the another important point is like uh, how the laws of reflection the most important law of reflection is angle of incident is always equal to angle of reflection how it is actually preserved here right so remember one thing like in case of a mirror whether it is a plane mirror or it is a spherical mirror all these uh, laws of reflection will hold true that means like if uh, angle of something is angle of incident it should be equal to the angle of reflection let us see how it actually looks like and why uh, i am saying so what is the proof of this one let me try to figure out so let's say let me draw this uh, spherical mirror once again it's like this way okay Okay. Now, our uh, principal axis. This is the principal axis. Fine. And now here we have, let's say, center of curvature. Okay. And here we have focal point. Let's say. Fine. Now let's say. um let me draw one line of for which is representing the light here and this is the line here right now the thing is like let me do one thing let me draw a line extend a line from center of curvature this is the line from center of curvature here This line, like this way, okay. Now, then uh, we have this particular angle. This is the angle of incident. Why I am calling this angle of incident? Because if I draw a tangent from here, let me draw a tangent from here across this particular path of your mirror. Maybe little bit diminished here, It's like this way. so from our law of circle we know very well that if we draw a tangent and uh, draw a, uh, a line from the center that will be served as a radius so radius is always perpendicular to the triangle right so this will act as a normal line for your 
plane mirror just like we have in a plane mirror the same way this will act as a line for normal and this angle will be the angle of incident and rest one that will be getting reflected from here this will be your angle of reflection which will be passing through the this one focal point right and this will be your angle of reflection and we know that this angle of reflection is always equal to angle of incident right so this is how the reflection phenomena actually takes place in a spherical mirror okay now let me let me mark it a little bit uh, in deeper sense yeah i hope now it's visible to you, all of you so this is a part of a tangent and if we draw a line from circle to the tangent it will be uh, perpendicular to the tangent and then this angle is the incident and this one is a reflected angle so i hope now it's clear to all of you that this is how the reflection actually takes place in a uh, spherical mirror all right now let me do some kind of uh, ray diagram let me try to figure out like how the image formation takes place here okay so again let me do draw a couple of uh, mirrors here so under this let's see this one is my mirror here this time i'm making a little bit shorter uh, smaller mirror so that i mean you know you can easily understand it this is a mirror here okay now the first question is like let's say the object whatever we are going to use over here or for which we are looking uh, to get the image this is present away from your center of curvature let me let me reduce the size and uh, make it little bit this way okay so this is my principal axis okay and uh, let's say this is the center of curvature and this is focal length this is center of curvature and this is your focal point fine now as i said the this time my object is away from the center of curvature so let's say this time the object is present over here that's it this time my object is here okay now the question is how you can plan to create a ray diagram all right so always remember that as we have already discussed in our uh, this session actually like a few minutes back we have discussed two different laws uh, for reflection over here right the first law was that if the uh, this is a light which is coming from some source is parallel to the principal axis on the reflection the light will pass through the focal point okay and the second law was like if a light is passing through the focal point upon reflection it will travel in a direction parallel to the principal axis okay so based on that we will try to figure out our image so the first point that that is the main reason like why do we prefer two lines actually while creating our ray diagram okay some people might have a doubt like why do we use uh, two lines actually for this so this is the reason like why we prefer two lines here okay so let me use this one so first of all the first line is like this way which is parallel to the principal axis okay this is the first line of sight and second one this is passing through the focal point right is that clear okay now now the thing is like let us see the reflections 
so as we have already studied about the uh, type of reflection here we are we already know what it uh, how it actually done so the first line which is actually parallel to the principal axis its reflection will pass through focal point right and the second line which is actually kind of uh, passing through the focal point its uh, reflection will ray will pass in a direction which is parallel to the principal axis right and the image will formed where these two lines are coinciding so this time it will form an inverted image okay so you can remember it i think uh, now it's very clear to you like how to draw these law, uh, lines and uh, how you can proceed in that this is how right just remember a very simple theorem right these are the two points if the line is parallel or upon reflection it will pass through focal point and if the line is passing through the focal point upon reflection it will pass through the parallel way right so it's very easy and very uh, handy setup like you can put a uh, your object away from the uh, center of curvature and you can get the result like this the image inverted image between the center of curvature and focal point okay now in the similar way let me take uh, another example another uh, uh, ray diagram for the same so under this let me let me draw one more uh, mirror right like this okay now this time what i'm planning to do is like i'm going to put my uh, object over the center of curvature right this time my object will be over the center of curvature so as you have seen in the last time uh, last uh, setup is like uh, object is away from the center of curvature so image will, will be uh, inverted and somewhat diminished actually right so this time let me put my object over center of curvature let's say this is your center of curvature this is a focal point um let me mark it c and this one is your focal point okay now let's say my object let me put this object on this uh, uh, your uh, center of curvature like over here okay this time my object is on the center of curvature now let's see let me draw the lines let me draw these two lines the first line is again which is uh, parallel to the principal axis i'm drawing here and the second line is passing through the focal point this is what i have done here fine so now as per the procedure what will happen as per these the, the two procedures that what we have studied the first line which was parallel to the principal axis will pass through this focal point right and the second line which was passing through the focal point will pass through this with a direction parallel to the principal axis and now see what will happen now the image will be again inverted but this time it will form at the center of curvature only right of almost equal size it will form at the center of curvature fine so again like when object is on the center of curvature the image formed will be of same size but again on uh, the inverted scenario and it will form over the center of curvature fine 
Now let me take another example here. This time what I'll be doing is like uh, I will put my object between the uh, center of curvature and focal point. Okay, so let me draw the uh, mirror now. Like this. This way. And now my principal axis. Okay. My center of curvature and this is the focal point. Fine. Now let me put my object over here and uh, as I already told you this time I will put my object between the center of uh, curvature and focal point somewhere here. Right? Like this. Clear? Now this is my object again. What are we doing? I'll just draw two lines. First line, which will be parallel to the uh, this uh, principal axis, and uh, let me let me use it. And the second one must be passing through the focal point, just like this way. Just remember these two rules, and uh, you will be out of all the issues, all the problems, like. Okay, like this way. Right now, what our rule says or procedure says the fault line which is parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focal point like this way. Fine, and the second one. Which, uh, which was actually passing through this uh, focal point will remain parallel to the principal axis. Right? Now, this time what will happen? Again, the object formed will be inverted but will be of greater size actually. Okay? This time the object, the uh, image form will be of greater size but inverted in nature. These will be your real images. Remember that every time the real image will be formed. Alright, I'll explain you the difference between the real and virtual image as well uh, once you proceed from this uh, point actually. Alright, is that clear to you? Like once the object is between the uh, center of curvature and a focal point, the image form will be real, larger but inverted. Now, let me take one more example. This time I'm going to put uh, my uh, uh, object on the focal point. Okay, so let's make it. like this then uh, let's see, let me draw the principal axis this is my principal axis here okay and uh, let me put this as a center of curvature and this as a focal point okay and now let me put the object over the focal point. Like this. Let me reduce the size and the it will take a lot of space like that. Now let's see what happens. Now this time again uh, if we can draw two lines, two lines here and uh, like this way, we were using the purple color for incident lines. Like this way. Now, ideally, we should draw a line which should be passing through the focal point, but again, this time we will not be in a position to draw any line which is passing through the focal point. 
So let us, uh, uh, you know, haphazardly draw this line which is passing through here. Right? Now what will happen? Let's see. Now the thing is, let me draw this uh, reverse line or reflected line here. This time, oops. Yeah. This time, what will happen? These two lines, the first one should be passing through the focal point, right? And the second one, which is passing through here, will be parallel to the first line, right? And we know very well the images will form once they collide with the other lines, right? If these lines collide with each other or something like uh, collide with these uh, setup. Once they, uh, you know, uh, meet each other, the point where these two lines meet each other, then only we can find the image. And you can see here, these are running in a parallel scenario. So we assume that they might meet at an infinity or something like that. So in this case, if the object is at the focal point, we will not see any image over here. Right? No image will be formed. Why? Because here the lines are neither converging nor diverging. Fine. Now, the last option. Let me move the, this object closer to our mirror. That means um, between this the focal point and pole. Yeah, from last time I was not trying to pole because it was not necessary. This is the pole here. Right, but. Uh, this time I'm going to put my object between this uh, focal point and pole. So let me draw these things. Again, let me draw the mirror here. And this is a very special case. The last one probably. Like this way. Okay, now this is our uh, center of curvature, this is our focal point, and let's say this is our pole. Fine. Now let's take uh, our object here, and this time let me put my object between this focal point and uh, pole. Okay, now what will happen? Again, let me draw the incident rays here. Like this, right? And uh, similar way, and draw it something like this way as well which is uh, supposed to be passing through my this one uh, focal point you can uh, virtually extend this line it must be passing through the focal point right and this one is for second or uh, this particular line straight one which is parallel to the principal axis this will pass through the focal point once again. Why? Because this is running in a direction which is parallel to the given setup. Right? So, what will happen? Here, yeah. again these two lines, let me, let me mark it with a green color. Here. So, here. So you can see here that the first line is actually getting reflected, right? And the second one is making it as a virtual setup here, right? So what will happen? The second line which was uh, passing through this way, which is supposed to be passed through the focal point, will pass through 
in the direction which is parallel to the principal axis and this line which was actually parallel I mean uh, which was uh, we have a parallel it will pass through the focal point something like this now you can see here that ideally these two lines will not meet with each other right but what happens with this case we find something very interesting here and we are in a position to create a virtual image like let's say if we extend it to the backward right something like this way right it meets somewhere here and now this will create image of our object from here now can you see the difference between uh, this image and the rest of our images the difference is that in the remaining of the images we have inverted image inverted uh, reflector but here we have the uh, same kind of uh, uh, same direction of reflection right both the objects are pointing up and this particular reflection of the given object is uh, larger in size and another very important factor that the image formed here is a virtual one now i hope you got the difference between the real image and a virtual image real images are formed when the actual lights are passing and virtual images are formed when actual lights are not passing but we extend that light or reflection to some another backward direction right so just remember this property of um, concave mirror like if the object is placed between focal point and a pole the image will be virtual erect and of larger size right i hope now it's very much uh, clear to all of you right so now let me show you some practical application a very common and very practical application here it is commonly used this concave mirror is commonly used in radiator of our uh, bikes or cars right it is used in our headlights actually like this so how it is actually done why 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 do we use this uh, concave mirror the reason is see let's say this is our concave mirror or radiator uh, i mean uh, reflector of our this uh, headlight right and uh, let's say Mm, we have our bulb here fine now what's happening here now let's say let's say some uh, to some point the light is going on this way right but let's assume like if we do not use this reflector then what will happen the light which is coming from backward will get lost somewhere right but since but since this light is getting into this uh, uh, reflector now it will not get lost it will just get reflected this way so what is we are doing right now we are directing all the uh, you know uh, lights all the lights to a single direction with the help of this particular reflector right that is the reason we use a concave mirror in our radiator uh, this one um, uh, our headlights or uh, search lights as well or the uh, lights of our cars or bikes so like this actually the same kind of an uh, example we can see here in our solar cooker or solar heater right let me show you let me demonstrate it actually how it actually works and uh, how it actually looks like now what happens i shown you the property like if the lights are coming from a di direction or coming in a way which is parallel to the principal axis all the lights will pass through 
focal point right so let us see how it actually looks like and how do we make use of the same in the solar cooker or solar heater right so solar cooker or solar heater what is the main source of energy main source of energy is sun right now it's very obvious like if the sun rays which are which is uh, which we consider to be at a very far from earth or uh, i mean uh, uh, the light which are being uh, sent by the sun will be parallel to the principal axis right let's say these are the lights which are falling over the this concave mirror these lights are coming from sun right Let's say something like this way. Now, what will happen? Let me draw this uh, center of curvature as well so that you can uh, center of curvature and principal axis so that it will be easy for you to understand and comment on. Okay, this is the center of curvature. I mean, sorry, principal axis. This is the focal point, and this is your center of curvature. Now, as per the formula, what will happen? All these lines who are coming from sun and uh, these are falling over your uh, concave mirror will pass through where? These will pass through your focal point, right? So you can say that you have uh, put all the energy at this particular point, right? All these rays are getting converted to this particular point only. That means all the energy, whatever energy the sun is uh, showing to you, will get converged to this particular, this particular point. Let me highlight it. This is the point where entire energy will be concentrated. Now what? You just put a, uh, you know, your pan or uh, I mean the bowl of your whatever you want to cook or whatever you want to heat up. You can just put it over here and it will heat the entire food or whatever, whatever it is. This is the another important use of your concave mirror. Apart from that, a quite interesting way is being used with the dentist. Right, you can see the enlarged image and uh, we can treat your teeth as uh, ever like this. And in these images, you can see we have a reflector, we have a solar heater, and this way. This is how it actually looks like. So, I hope uh, you like the video. And if you have any doubt, any com uh, questions, please feel free to let us know. And uh, if you like this video, please share and subscribe the same. Thank you so much, and have a nice time ahead. Bye-bye.